chapters and sections and chapters have these asterisks after them. Do you know what they mean? Yeah, difficulty. Oh, okay. I mean, it's not, I mean, I wasn't clear about it, but I think it's difficulty, yes. Mm. I think he said it somewhere, maybe in the preface at some points. I, mm. I have read it, but uh, he said like some chapter like tend to be like, for example, in this chapter, like time and space complexity, right? right? That did go up in difficulty of understanding. Uh, I was like, great, really happy with the chapter. Then I got to that and I was like, I do not know what's happening anymore. Yeah. Um, okay, I was looking for that back in the preface, but I just couldn't find it. And I was trying to make meaning of the answers. Anyways. I could be wrong, but I think it's in the preface or something like that. On the, the first, first part, the chapter zero, whatever you call it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Cool. Um, well, this is flow of execution everyone's favorite topic. Um, so the goal of the chapter, um, pretty simple, is to talk about how you can control program flow and execute um, based on criteria. Um, he started off talking about just the concept of conditional evaluation, basically, if condition, then expression. Um, and this is an if and only if logical condition is true, then you go forward and execute the expression. You can also do the same thing uh, with if, but plus and else at the end. So you can evaluate another expression if the condition is not true. Um, and then multiple expressions um, that are within this sort of if and else statements do need to be enclosed in brackets because it will, or curly brackets because it will, uh, a, evaluate one expression at a time. Um, so if is a function, which I don't know that I had ever really considered that, but it is in fact a function, um, and it returns a result of the conditionally permitted expression. Um, nested ifs, like if, else, if, else, evaluate all conditions in order until one positive case is found, then returns the corresponding expression so it doesn't evaluate all of them simultaneously or first. Uh, this exercise uh, was meant to have you practice the if, else, if, else uh, formation by writing a pretty simple function that returns the sign of, uh, well, the label of sign of a given numeric value. So categorizing whether it's positive, negative, or zero. So you can see here, First condition I used was if x is greater than zero, then it's positive. If it's less than zero, it's negative. And then you don't need to find the final condition because anything that doesn't pass through these will mean it's zero. Um, and then you can see that it, in fact, does return this. Cool. Um, some more information about the conditions used um, in these flow of execution statements. Um, the conditions are required to be singular, defined logical values. So they're true or false, and they can't be NAs. They can't accept, so they can't accept missing values. They can't accept um, conditions of lengths other than one, and uh, they coerce any non-logical conditions to logical. So that may not work the way you're expecting to um, if you don't keep those in mind. Um, exercise 8.3 uh, was illustrating that the utility of using is true and is false uh, to enclose your conditions um, when using if expressions because uh, they can handle um, NAs. They, the conditional expressions, if you include an NA in the uh, value that you're passing to the condition, then it will just throw an error and break, but is true can evaluate uh, and is false, sort of analogous, uh, can evaluate if NAs and will say that they are false, like not meeting the condition. Um, and so this can be helpful to enclose your condition in so that an NA cropping up doesn't break it. It doesn't fix the multiple values issue though. Um, then goes on to talk about exception handling. Um, there are three common types of exceptions. Uh, 
and those are errors, warnings, and messages. Errors stop the flow of execution, and so it will break, code will not proceed, and it can be triggered with the command stop. Um, warnings don't stop the flow, but could potentially become errors and are supposed to be like sort of serious uh, messages sharing that you've triggered this warning um, and you can trigger that with the command warning. And then um, messages just share diagnostic information um, triggered with messages. Uh, try catch is a mechanism for handling unusual conditions. So a way to basically program in that errors should arise or warnings should arise. And then suppress warnings and suppress messages are super helpful for ignoring all of the annoying content that you don't wanna see, um, even if you maybe shouldn't pay attention to it. Uh, he included this exercise that is not very interesting to look at, where you call suppress messages uh, to enclose that, to enclose a library call for data table, which emits a message whenever you call it. So it turns out when you call library data table in suppressed messages, nothing, there's no output. It just happens. It's very, very not interesting to look at as a group. Um, then the next section was about repeated evaluation, which means it's time for loops, which made me very happy as someone who's much more comfortable with loops than with mapping. Um, so loop functions include uh, that were over the main, main focus of the exercise of this chapter were uh, while loops, which ex evaluate expressions as long as a condition is true, and for, which evaluates each element and vector and then evaluates the expression. Um, loops can be controlled more precisely by the function break, which will escape a loop um, if conditions that, and then next can be used to skip remaining expressions in advance to the next iteration. So you can get a little more precise control of what happens when your loops iterate. Um, and then return gives uh, the specified value, it gives it immediately and ends a function um, by returning that value. And uh, it is itself of a function. So you do need to enclose the expression that you're returning um, in parentheses. Um, <laughs> exercise 8.5 was a complicated uh, math uh, related uh, pseudo random number generator. And I decided not to do that one because I didn't want to be sad. Um, so moving on, um, exercise 8.8 .8 is illustrating um, the use of next and with it by asking you to identify what's wrong with the following code. Um, and here the next does break this loop. It, never advances it when the if statement isn't true. So J never gets incremented for the next pass to start with J equals two. So you just kind of get stuck here with not happen nothing happening. So the um I think the solution would probably be to remove next. There are probably other ways that you can uh fix that. Uh, but I remove next and it returns the expected output. And then XS 8.9 was another version of what's wrong with this code. And um, the error here was the semicolon. It needs a pair of curly braces. Um, oh yeah, it's very C-ish, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so it, uh, with the semicolon, it just gives an error, unexpected colon, in while J is yeah. less than 10. So it just doesn't understand that. And then if you take the curly brace out, it does run forever printing yeah. ones. Um, so that's not desirable. And then with curly braces uh, around the expressions, it does run as expected. Yeah, it's never go back to the white. Okay. Sorry, go say that again. Yeah, like here it's it's it just like uh the check is never implemented because like it's in another like uh yeah. Right. That's very weird, yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Um, as and then this was probably the section of the chapter that I was less comfortable with. Um, again, I have not have much of a computer science background, so time and space complexity of algorithms was a newer topic for me. But basically, the idea is that you can evaluate, you can get a 
a rough, rough estimate of an algorithm's runtime and memory consumption as a function of its input size. And that might be helpful for evaluating which algorithms are the most uh, appropriate for your data, particularly if you have very large data. Um, and uh, so you can sort of calculate what size of data you can use given your hardware and resources, computing resources. Um, given different algorithm options. Um, so you might want to figure out how many primitive operations need to be performed as a function of either a sequence data's length uh, of n or a tabular data's rows n and columns m. Um, so there was an overview of the sort of scales of complexity that are, are used. Um, and I felt like me muddling through an explanation of that wasn't going to go very well. But when I was looking up additional resources of this, I came across this graph that uh, I think more effectively summarizes uh, the concepts of the different uh, big O e expressions, I guess, um, showing the increase uh, in the number of operations needed um, given the number of elements being fed into the algorithm. And I did just steal the code for this graph from the internet. Thank you, internet. Um, so I then- I have trouble with this. Oh, sorry, I don't know. Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I don't know, it's just a, more of a comment, but like I do have uh, problems a lot of the time where like, um, you know, say you have eight gigabytes of memory and then you have a data set that's four gigabytes and you're like, well, like that'll probably work. But then when you start to do operations on it, it it uh, crashes because you've exceeded your memory capacity because it, you know, takes some amount, some multiple of the size of the data set to do right. operations on it. And I never know, like, if there's like a rule of thumb, you know, do I need like five times the size of the data set? I don't know, but I, it, I it is something. I've, uh, yeah. I have yeah. another perspective on the, not on the on the the big O notation and stuff like that. This is all great, but like I usually think um, if it's uh, like first, uh, I'm 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 not like I do not have a good intuition necessarily of what or is O and log the N and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I do not have good intuition of of that, so I usually sample or use a subset of what I'm doing. And then I'm checking like all how long it takes. And if I generalize that to more like uh let's say if 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 I do like let's say I work on one state and that took me something if I work for 50 states, how long does it me take? And sometimes I go even slower like I, I take the first hundred row or the first or I sample them depend of what kind of, of stuff I want. And then I kind of figure like, yeah, this needs to be optimized or this that like who cares? I can throw whatever power at it. But uh, uh, this is I how that... usually I deal with it. But that does not necessarily mean like this complexity graph is 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 unhelpful. It's like uh, it's useful to know like for example if you have a four two two loops, it's gonna be n square. Uh, that's the easy part. Like I, I know the n, I know kind of the n, the log the n, and I know the n square. But the rest, like for example, or can you you go like a bit smarter? Like I don't know too much about it. Yeah, and I guess that sampling technique will work like better for like this type of yeah. big O uh, notation algorithms versus this one like the sampling may uh lead you astray if we're suddenly exponentially increasing i mean this uh, is this is useful like if you deal with a bunch of indexes and uh because like what's what's the an indexes is supposed to help you is supposed to help you like scan faster to your data mm -hmm. and that's why like you generate indexes that help you like navigate and 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 if you generate in the indexes it will be faster because it will just be like an operation on zero and one instead of an operation on some other stuff. Right. That's why we, we spend a bunch of time doing that. But yeah. Yeah. And Corey, I think that the rule of thumb is uh it depends on the, the type of algorithm 
yeah. Things. So you have to know more about the algorithms you're using, which is a category of knowledge that I have not. Uh, I'm not a computer science, but like everything is solved usually when I work on smaller problem, then I generalize them. Yeah. <laughs> and I miss the time when I don't do that stuff. Like if I do, I think I can like, you know, be smarter and go fast. Uh, usually I, sh I, I regret that. And I said like, I should start with a smaller stuff, try to identify all the problem and then generalize. Right. In general, I find that anytime I try to rush coding also, poorly. This is correlated. It's true. Yeah. Uh, we can make a graph for that later. Um, yeah, it's really a good graph. Like every time I rush something like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so there was an exercise in this section um, that asks you to calculate um, the size, the largest size data set you can have given your available RAM. I learned a new unit. I didn't know about gigabytes. Um, yeah. I was only familiar with gigabytes, but apparently gigabytes is a more accurate uh, measure of binary storage. And um, so given this plus, this H plus function and how uh, much, um, like how many comparisons there are uh, per data point that you put in. Um, so this did require some algebra, which I have not done in a while. So I uh, figured out the formula myself think, and then I think it was wrong. And so then uh, chat GPT did the quadratic formula solution for me, but they evaluated to one digit off. So whatever algebra doesn't matter is what I've learned. Um, I'm going to stick to statistics. Uh, but basically the process I went through here was um, this was the size in bytes yeah. of 16 gigabytes. And then I, uh, evaluated that the number of scalars you could have um, in this operation, given that um, a scalar is eight bytes, uh, did some <laughs> bad algebra to solve for uh, the uh, number of data points I could have given this info. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah it's just a quadratic because you have a square root multiply. Uh, oh no, you don't, I don't know. Yeah, so I think the point of the exercise was not for me to feel bad about algebra high school mm -hmm. experiences, but more to think about like, what does it mean to represent data in bytes? Um, I learned a lot like what a gigabyte is, uh, but I thought it was kind of interesting uh, to include, like I don't entirely understand why this section was included in this chapter. like. I guess it's relevant because loops can take a lot of like data processing power, but like the concept of flow of execution and then like the time. Yeah, I don't I mean, think it's I, matter too much inside of this. I, I agree with you, right. like these chapters, maybe not here. But, right. So it just sort of appeared. Like what's it, what's it's important is like, um, so I don't remember the type of R, like we have integers, double and characters. So if you use like a, an incorrect data type, uh, let, let's say like, yeah, you are just using a scalar for the, uh, and you take eight bytes. It's probably different for another one. Mm -hmm. So that's also like something like you should consider, like if you want to estimate how many data points. But right. yeah. I agree, like this was like, I think this is more like, yeah computer science people that's think that's important but you need more time for doing it right so at least i i feel like this chapter uh yeah started me thinking about it and uh i can come back to that later maybe um I and mean, so you, you got the i think this was the correct take yeah um so i didn't get through all of the exercises oh, that's fine. <laughs> walk through the ones that I did. So the first set of exercises was another where there are like a bunch of subparts. So yeah. I'm gonna go through them one yeah, by good enough. one. Um, so basically the, this was just asking you to repeat what you had learned in the chapter, but when yeah. when does evaluating a, a condition yield a warning? And so again, the um, 
main culprits are when the condition is not of length one uh, and if the condition is NA and we can yeah. guard against NAs to um, by enclosing them and is true or is false. Uh, a dangling else is an else not preceded by an if, and this usually get arises um, from an else being placed on a new line. Um, it's a, when it's not enclosed in a larger curly bracket, um, and it's being interpreted as a separate statement instead of a continuation of the else yeah. um, or the if. And this did happen to me when I was coding last week, and then now I know that to call it a dangling else. Uh, at least in VS Code, uh, the linter will tell you. Yeah. I think in RStudio, it probably tell you also. I don't know. It didn't tell me. It didn't. And it broke. So, uh, but yeah. then I realized pretty fast what was going on. So, but it didn't tell me. Um, I think you can use the linter in RStudio, but I never remember the name you, I used. So it will like just run into your code and, and, and try to guess what's incorrect. And you have like, uh, in VS Code, you have like um, a panel with all the error possible into your code. That's maybe not possible, but like there are frequently poor error. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one, I know like I ran into it recently. So it tell you like the, you really want the else to be like on the same level that the curly right. bracket closing. So yeah. Right. Um, I don't like the aesthetic of it being on the same line. <laughs> like I wanted it to be on a new line, but uh, you know, I, I can live with that somehow. There is this package lint like linter, lint lint r that yeah. um I've never set it up, but I, I think you can set it up to get like better linting in uh yeah. R Studio if that's yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not chat GPT, but I think it could be useful. <laughs> when are we going to get our chat GPT powered packages? They, take, uh, they, they provide copilots, but you need to um, ask you provide copilots. Right. Yeah, posit does it now, right? Yeah. I think uh, you, you have to give them money, which uh, I'm not going to do. Um, okay, so uh, if you put if as yeah. the last expression of curly braces uh, block within a function's body, it throws an error, it's unexpected, and then curly brace. Um, don't do that. Um, the double ampersand and double pipe, I guess, are, are say that they are lazy evaluators because they evaluate one operand at a time. Uh, they evaluate the first operand and only proceed to the next operand if necessary. Um, it's like if the first condition is met, then it will uh, yeah. proceed to the next evaluation. Um, and so they're lazy because they yeah. don't do more work than necessary. I I I have write so many bad cards with that. Yeah, <laughs> like because they are not evaluated. Like if your condition never returns the second one, never returns something, you could never see it. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's good to 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 check. But you are, yeah, because of that. But yeah. Yeah, you should choose your single or double ampersand carefully uh, yeah. and to with purpose. Um, and so then it's asking now what's the difference between the double ampersand and the single ampersand. Um, the single one is vectorized and double is not. And as we just discussed, the double only evaluates as many operators as needed. Yep. I, I rarely use it. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have uh, enough time to really do a good in-depth uh, explanation of this, but by and large, I think that while and for are interchangeable, but it might be kind of messy to set it up. Um, he included in this in this chapter that I just grabbed um, a model of how something he had just done in four could be converted to be used. Uh, with well instead, uh, but you can see like he has to go through all these hoops of setting up name, temp vector, temp iterator, and then um, using them in a funny way where it's like when this is a for loop, it's like three lines of code. I, I think like the main difference between a while and a for loop is like at the beginning, the while loop will evaluate something. While the for loop is just iterating over something. 
Right. So uh, maybe the while loop will return nothing because like our return just like, uh, let's say here, here name, uh, if the temp iterators never match the length of the temp vectors, uh, uh, name will not be created. Right. So you will go outside of the, the Y will never run and you will never uh, create, I mean, it will be null because mm -hmm. you create on the first line. But uh, yeah, that's one reason people like make the distinction between Y and for like, Y need to evaluate something first while for can just go into like the iteration. Right. Um, but I agree with you most of the time. Right, there's ways to, to make it happen if you needed to, but it might not be pretty. Um, but I think, you know, like it's better to use the more naturally suited version yeah, there is right. use of while loop is like when you want like some program to run all the time so your screen is not so like <laughs> <laughs> that's mostly like the I'm mostly using while for that right yeah. now and not sure. in R. Uh, okay and so then uh what's wrong with return uh one plus two in parentheses times three um, return only gives the first expression. So here that's just one plus two if you wanted to actually calculate the full yeah. uh, mathematical I'm expression, sure. you have to include it all in one set of parentheses so that you can. That's uh, funny, I never thought about this one. Yeah, but it's a good point. <laughs> a lot of these uh, these first exercises in each of these chapters where they, he like has you go through a bunch of little details, it's like, eventually like a year or two from now you're gonna face palm and remember being like this is the reason why this isn't working because of this like one little nit that he did make me go through so but it's it's, it's a good point uh, yeah ret return times three like this is yeah um and so then um another uh you know, kind of nitpicking <laughs> exercise um ask you to verify which of the following can be used um, in logical conditions in if statements, as logical conditions in if statements safely uh, without throwing the errors because of length or NAs. Um, and so I just went through and labeled most of them, like they're fine as long as there isn't an NA uh, provided as X, which could happen. So you can fix these all by using is true to encapsulate the condition so that you can handle NAs. Um, so match uh, X, Y could be problematic because uh, it returns a vector. Sorry, my brain kind of spluttered yeah. up there. But uh, so it returns a vector and the condition must be a length one. So if you feed it any X with a length greater than one, it will cause problems. It also um, returns NAs for unmatched values. And so um, I think I forgot a parenthesis here. So yep. just remember yes, that, it, for, pretend that it's there. But uh, basically you want to enclose it with is true and any um, to make match work. Um, and again, same thing here. Uh, if there aren't any matches, it results in an A. So you should again enclose it in is true. Um, I did not have enough time to brainstorm as many scenarios as possible. So I thought it could be a fun group discussion topic yeah, about uh, what can go wrong with following code chunk depending on the type and form of X. Well, there's an obvious one, no? What is x equals zero? Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, x is empty. It's become one, two. That's the famous sec, sec along and stuff like that. We can, we can, we can do it. Like, do you want me to share my screen? Sure. Uh, it's messy screen. Uh, we'll zoom shot more. No, share screen. Yeah, try everything up this one. Okay. Do you have my uh, wonderful yeah. bug? Let's go. <clears throat> okay, so what was the 
the so first I initialize accounts. Yeah. Um I can yeah if you can copy past I will yeah it will save me time typing but Oops. here you are. Oh yeah then I do have let, let's do like let's do it but then we can update it for length of x which x is never defined anywhere here no I'm correct no. and for uh, well it, I like typing it I will I will do something like that but let's do like the what's inside of it but yeah curly braces should be added no If X still not defined, uh, count, which is doing one line. Yeah. But we can, like, after that. Yeah, X is not found. So let's do X equal. 10, so we good, and then this count correct. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> so yeah, everything is a lot of stuff are incorrect, like this. So let's try to fix it. Like um we want to increment x. So X is correct. So let's go with um, that first, because now we have Lex. Uh, I check should be correct now. This part never know. One. So yeah. This right. Well, I mean that is. I mean, just want to increment discounts. This is a function to increment discount, but it's wrong on so many level. That's hard to stuff. Although, right. like, I, you know, I don't know. Like, obviously, if x has a length of zero, then that uh, yeah, that's crash would be a problem. But like, I don't. Do you need the uh, the curly braces in this? No, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Okay, they just they just make it more readable. Yeah, but you want something like if you do that. And that's not very good. So what was like? Uh, Wait, you know, I, I guess if x isn't a vector, yeah, or something. Yeah. x is still length of one, but like, what you want is something like that. Oh no! Mm -hmm. so right, because the uh... I have to remember what second does. I think it counts by one. Well, I think you have to give it a start and and. From yeah, seconds along with so uh, 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 C, uh, C, uh, underscore L E N will get would give you like 10, yeah, like one through 10. That's what it should does no? This is. Yeah, I mean, I think it is. It is counting, you know, like all the, all the elements above zero. I'm, I, oh. I, I, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, but sec, sec, second length should then provide you. Uh, oh, is it sync length? Yeah, yeah, that'll give you like ten. That's the one we want. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Oh. Well, at that point, yeah. I just want sec length, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this one should be correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We might have to reset count, I guess. Yep. Zero. Oh, it's one, no. Yeah, but oh, you're correct. Okay. okay. 
So X is set up correctly. Okay. This one is funny. Yeah. One. Let's start. I will add curly just because I want some. Also because Oh, yes, I'm on terminal. No. Yeah. Count. Anyway, there's no change back. Um, yeah, I want to, to, yeah, you can't do that in one line. But we allow me to do that. Oh, it's because, uh, if X, um, like, like, yeah, yeah, uh, I need, I need, I need also a curly bracket here. Well, I think like seek length X is gonna return, uh, yeah, I like a weird thing. It's gonna, because uh, X is a is a vector of one through ten, isn't it? Let's go slowly. Yeah, the, the correct. Yeah, so we can't use. I think seek length you have to. Only takes a like a scalar, I think. I don't think you can. I, I could be wrong with that. Let's see. But at least this is what we want here. We want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, oh, that's what we want it to be. Oh, okay. I think this uh, is what we want. You okay, just want to increment okay. these counts. Yeah. So okay, so this one is correct. Oh, sorry. Uh, Control. Oh, I need to retype it. Okay. Um, then I think the next step is like uh, the if statement to check. And then like the X, we, we're going to probably need to modify that. Which one is it? Like it, you filter on one, on X of one. So X need to be a vector. Because like if it was just x equal ten, it will not return us anything, no. Well, I think it's x uh, uh x subset i. Right? Yeah, I think. Oh, but like if I have like uh, x uh just a scalar or just one a vector of length one, it will be bad too, no. My x yeah, current that's is true. That. Yeah, x yeah x needs to be. Well, we can see it, but like greater than zero. Then it implement the counts and it just have counts. I have not updated it, but that's fine. Should be mm -hmm. two now. Yeah. What's wrong with my oh. This is why you should open it as a curly bracket. <laughs> uh, and then counts. Take the value of counts plus one. Correct. <laughs> And then I clean this one. One, two, then obviously the second one because X is 10. Mm -hmm. So if I do X one, I do something. If I do mm -hmm. X two, and I, I got NA, mm -hmm. but it's because like my X was already, if I do count, was it on, on zero? Yes. And should just break. Oh no, it's break at zero too. Oh yeah, because I'm printing i. Sorry, I'm not printing count. And count should be just one. Mm -hmm. 
So yes, let's do if it's one of them. Yeah, think length is incorrect. <laughs> so it will be second long, no? Yeah. Turns out Here. I was good. Um, it should be one to second on, but I think yeah. it, I mean at that point you can just use length x. Yeah. I can just use what length x. Yes, but length will be incorrect if it's zero. That's true. Yeah, it's correct. But if my um right. get an error well you, you could quite, like you you still want like to have like your sequence to be something at least you right that and i mean at that point you could include the x then close the x i is greater than zero and is true to deal with the null i think mm -hmm. and yeah at that time uh you should have like if So this condition should be is true now also, let's say. Yeah, I think that should fix it. Uh, probably not because like the length is incorrect here, but yeah, let's do that. I miss one oh, point, Jesus. Yeah. Yep. And counts should. Hmm. I need this because I'm still. Hmm. Zero. That's this one is correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, and yeah, I think the bracket make it also more readable. And I, I can also add a print statements. I know it's I know people like said it's not great, but I like them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's all uh, for debugging. I need to close one, I need to close two. I think it's good. We're better than the first one. And I, if we can manage like the second length or the sec length, I never remember. But I don't like that. Should be, let's, I mean, I don't remember. We have done that, no? Yeah, I, what, 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 uh, what do you want them to output? Uh, taking care when the argument length is zero. This is something, yeah, this is good. Ah. Because x equal nil, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I, if I do one to 10, and here numerical expression is 10 elements, only the first is used, which is not gonna do work. So if I do length, of it. Let's start to be crazy a bit. Correct. And then if I do X equal null, correct too. Because mm -hmm. now my a length of sex along will return one, no? No zero, then better. That's still incorrect. I don't know. I don't like this loop. <laughs> <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's a way to fix it. To... Yeah, there's one. And I think you mentioned it. Let me review it in the fall section. Is length? Yeah, we generally suggest repression one length with second lamb or thank length lengths. Oh, uh, okay. Huh. And I, so it should be thank alarm. Let's see in my function. 
or sync length length. I don't know which one I should use here. In this case, it should be sync. Len and here length. I think I'm correct in the number of parentheses. No. Uh, so my length is good. No. Should we delete that also? I think I miss one. Did I miss one? One, two, three. One, two, three. Yes, I miss one. Argument length equal zero. Well, I don't see it too much, but this is what's recommended. I don't remember why. And we should... Maybe seek a long length. I wonder if that works. Uh, let me check. Uh, uh, I'll just try. why do I have also like a parenthesis here? Oh, sorry, does not need it. This is why, but that does not change the x. Um, still adding to my counts. Um, anyway, it does not provide too much explanation why. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's it's because you are out of bounds. But yeah, I need to reread carefully second line. Let's do that. I th I, th I think seek along might work if you wrap it around length. That's what I have done previously. Yeah, but oh, you don't think uh, that'll work? Seek along man. Yes, and then yes. Yeah, but if you if you do seek along uh, length, no. So we use both, or so I think length goes in the. That's gonna uh, go give me one, yeah. Yeah, I think I think if you reverse it, like seek along, uh, and that call seek along on length of x, and then you'll always get a non-zero. Yeah, uh, but I think I like like the second uh, just the second one. Oh, because like I like this error message. Oh, that yeah. Argument yeah. of length zero. Length zero. Mm -hmm. that's, that's good. Yeah, like... I think that's fair too. Yeah. So this is something that we want, I guess. So you evaluate it first. Yeah. Do we solve this exercise? Contest, yes. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're we definitely identified a lot of ways it could go wrong. Do you identify <laughs> so, more? Uh, no, I have a. I did a few more exercises. If you want me to uh, share them, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't finish all. Sure. I did uh, fifteen and sixteen. But yeah, the the one length is supposed to be bad cut uh, for some reason. I don't remember yeah. why. Hmm. And yeah, curly braces like it's supposed. And this true is helping a lot. Also, I think here. I think this is one take of the chapter also. I never used this tool before. Mm -mm. Me neither. Um, it's so probably I, very cheap on the computing side. Um, I I'm curious what's... did exercise 8.15, which was, um, well, I did half of it because I felt like doing left, shift left and shift right was boring. Um, but basically is program like use a loop to create a function that uh, gets rid of the first n observations of the x and adds n missing values at the end of the vector. Um, so I used a while loop um, and incremented i and basically it was just like while the i is less than the n or equal to the n values this uh, shift value. Um, subset x from uh like drop the first item 
and shift to the so second item in the vector to the length of the vector and then add um, tack on and uh, and a real to the end and then increment. Uh, so we'll keep doing that in, well, until it gets to the value of the vector. Um, and so you can see that it does shift left. And right is the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I just didn't do that because yeah, yeah. I have other things to do with time. Um, and then uh, this for some reason took me a little bit longer, but similar exercise where you're implementing your version of the difference um, function, which basically creates a new vector that uh, has the difference between um, each item in the vector and plus yeah, and know. whatever lag you set. And uh, so I used a while loop again where uh, I had it well operating while the length of well I was less than the length of x um, and basically just taking that uh, i plus the lag difference that you specified minus the iter the number of the iterations you're on um, of the x vector. Um, yeah, that, building a, a moving windows. Yeah. Yeah, basically moving windows and then um, return that. Uh, the beginning of the vector just to, um, and then cutting off the length by the lag so that you don't have uh, NAs at the end and see that it Which works. Which one sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, it's 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 like, this is like, I think like an example of a technical question in an interview. Right, yeah. I this, is the straight, this is like literally like the perfect example, I feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, and for some reason, I I don't know what I was doing, but I kept breaking it, but then I got there at the end. Um, and then I didn't do the last two questions. Um, okay. It was more writing functions that implement the looping that uh, we were learning about in this chapter. That's it. Yeah, this is also like a technical question. Like, run up the vector, like you basically convert them to character, then... Uh, if you want to round up like as a as a modulo or convert to character or numeric, like all of them, like I uh, still like, yeah, yeah. I I think my take on this chapter is mostly the is true. I will say, and uh, on the condition, uh, I don't know what's your take on, but like I will I will just get that. I think. <laughs> yeah, I think I I. I think it was a pretty straightforward chapter yeah. and um, honestly didn't have a ton of content in it. Well, great. You did a good job with it still. Yeah. Uh, a good enough job, let's put it that way. Yeah. So next week is me and uh, yeah, a lot of work. Yeah. I'll sign up. Uh, I'll sign up for the week after for week 10, I guess. Perfect. I would have to do that because I don't think I put my name, but Let's do it right now. Oops. Uh, oh yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, perfect. So see you next week. Yeah. Okay, Thank you. you. And have a good week. Bye. Yeah, have a good week. Now I have to tap in. Uh,